Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Okay, we're going to start off our damsel here. This is a good damsel to use if you're fishing some either shallower water or if you find the fish are closer to the surface and you don't want it sinking so much. Got the uh, balanced damsel, the belly flop damsel that we have on another tutorial that's good for fishing a little deeper and kind of from an indicator or uh, more of a sinking line or midge tip. But this again is a slower sinking and uh, lighter weight fly. So we're going to start off by tying on some, we're just attaching our thread here at the, the top where we're going to put the eyes in. And what I got is some 25 pound mono. You could use 20, 25, 30, whatever it takes. Then we grab our lighter, as Cheech calls this, the poop colored lighter. It uh, has to be this kind of lighter. Anyway, we're just gonna singe the ends here and let it ball up all the way down to where it's held. Kind of blow that out. Do the same thing on the other end. Okay, so you burn them right up to where you have them in the pliers here, little forceps or hemostats, like so. And now I'm gonna color them with a red Sharpie. You could use red or orange. Okay, you got them colored up like that a little bit. And now I'm gonna attach them. And we just figure eight these on right where the eyes go up there, like so. Okay, now once we've got them on, I like to both uh, give a little bit more protection on the color. So I'm gonna seal that in with some fluorescing UV clear fly finish. And uh, you don't need a ton on here. The eyes are already big enough. Zap them. Okay, now those will stay on there really nice. All right, next step is I'm gonna tie in my wire. I do this so that I've got uniformity on my body. Just tie that in right behind the eye and then take it all the way back. I, I like to keep it along the side, the wire at least, the side of the hook. Now I'm going to grab my Grizzly Marabou. It's olive. It's got these nice barring marks on it. And I actually just use one feather per and you come in here and kind of get the tip. Now because I like to keep these bodies really slender, I'm not going to do the trick where I tie this in all the way up the body. So I'm just going to tie it in about three quarters or half the body length. And I'm going to come in here really tight and clip it. So kind of like that. And then just with some sharp scissors, right as close as I can to the base and clip that off. Luckily, this isn't too bulky, so it's gonna be relatively easy to wrap over that and not create a huge bump. Okay, next we're gonna go in with our pheasant tails. So obviously you want this to match your naturals. This is an olive dyed center pheasant. So I'm going to grab five to six fibers. And 
and you just clip them off from the stem and then I like to line up the tips like that and those actually ended up being pretty lined up and I'll grab them with my thread and then just kind of slowly move them back so that only the tips are going to be protruding there. Again, I don't want a big lump of materials back here. And just conserve my thread wraps. Lost one, so I'll tie him back in there. And now I'm going to advance the thread. <clears throat> And just cover up the body there again keeping it nice and slender like so okay now this is a same technique that you'll see with pheasant tails where you're counter wrapping I like to counter wrap the pheasant because it's easier to tie off as opposed to the wire so the pheasant tails we're gonna grab these and we're going to with the rotary feature go forward And of course, the thread's unwrapping, so we can catch that. You can put it in your bobbin cradle if you want. I'm going up just about to the thorax area. Now what I like to do is go in front of the eye, so that kind of catches it there, and then I'm going to go back behind it, one more wrap, and then I'm going to pull these back and do a wrap right in front, and it will snag the thread and the bent over pieces of pheasant tail. Because again, you're wrapping this the opposite direction you normally do. The thread is actually trying to unwind it as you wrap. Then we'll come in here and snip these off. And now we'll come in with the wire. And one trick I like to use is the Stompho hackle pliers. They're nice because they've got this mouth on them. And it's metal. So you can just put your wire in there and it's gonna hold onto it nice and tightly. And you've got the ring here so you can control it. And then we will advance the wire going again the traditional way, which is pulling the rotary towards me or wrapping away from me. And you wanna keep that a little bit at an angle so it's crossing the pheasant tail fibers all the way to just before the eye or over the thorax there and then I just like to undo a couple of the wraps that I got introduced as I wrapped it again you can use the bobbin cradle or hold it I would find it just to be just as quick here and then we'll helicopter off the wire okay so that's our body so far pretty pretty skinny Now, next thing is we're going to grab a little bit of our dubbing. The thorax is going to be kind of a two-phase. This is going to be the hot spot. And it's our one of our best-selling dubbings. <laughs> uh, if you've seen Lance Egan's Frenchie, that's probably why. But uh, I love tying this UV shrimp pink in uh, hot spots. So <clears throat> that's what I'm going to do. Just a little bit of dubbing here. That's actually too much, but we'll work around it. Yeah, that's all right. All right, now I'm going to grab my thin skin, and this is just olive. And you can you can kind of mix that up again just to match your naturals. And I, I like to measure this so that it's. I'm going to cut it to be just enough to span the, the eyes there, in between. Now I'm gonna place this right on the, kind of the middle of this UV shrimp pink, because again, I got more than enough. So it's just tied in there like that. Then I'm gonna add in a little bit of our pheasant tail color eye stub. Little tiny bit, because we're going to do this in two parts. OK, 
Okay, that just lays a base so that I can now grab my partridge. This is dyed olive. You, you could still use brown and be all right, the, or natural, because they're just the legs. So I want to prep the feather like that, just cut a little V notch in there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in at a 45 degree angle right on the middle of the thorax and pinch that. So now I've got it with my left hand and then I do a soft wrap and I capture so the legs are right in there like that. And you'll notice that we got a little bit of escaping there. Just pinch that again. I twisted it like so. And then if you need to, you can adjust the length at this point, but that's about what I want, so I don't need to do any adjusting. Now I'm gonna pull that down a little tighter, a couple of wraps, and then just trim this off. Okay, so we've got our legs there. Now, Again, just a small amount of the pheasant tail dubbing to round off the thorax and into the head. Kind of figure eight that. If you notice that relatively speaking on damsels, the head is a little chunky. So that's what we're, we're getting for, the effect we're going for here. Now as we pull this, you can see the hot spot show up and it will splay out those legs a little bit for us, which is what we want. You'll see those damsels in the water, they, they're all leggy and move a lot. And so stretch out this thin skin and then just grab a wrap on top there, a couple of tight ones, and then I'm gonna come in behind that and that gives us a good tie-off point. And I can stretch this, come in here and just very carefully trim. And this is where having sharp scissors helps. Oh man, I've got something in the marabou there. All right, now we're just gonna grab our little Tiemco Midge whip finisher, oh, this is a dual purpose whip finisher. And one final thing here that we're going to do to give this a little bit more strength, trim this off. We're going to come in and give it another shot of our UV clear, fluorescing UV clear. And that's just right over the wing case. And I like to tag the thread too, to strengthen that. And you can even kind of bridge the gap where the, the eyes are. You can see how that shines for us. And one more little coat. All right, there we are. That's our Lancer Damsel. It's uh, influenced by the old Frenchie, Lance Egan style. But uh, this has probably been one of my best performing damsels this year. And so give it a whirl. It's great for any hat. You can match the colors. This is an olive kind of brownish, but you can go full on uh, lime. You can do more brown, um, lighter colors. We've got all the variations there for you, so give it a whirl.